Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 14 in this series on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll finally start working on the UMG aspect of our inventory system. In particular, we're going to create the inventory slot widget itself. So this is the part of our inventory system that when we open our inventory, we'll display the icon for our item. This project has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors. And with that said, let's open up our projects and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to the editor. And in today's video, we're gonna start working on being able to see our inventory system via our UMG widgets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first main component of our widget. So let's go to core, go to widget, go to, we'll stay in this folder, we'll create a new subfolder called widget elements. And in here, I'm just gonna create one called inventory. We'll have one for equipment too. And in here, we're gonna create a blueprint class so go to user interface, widget blueprint, this will be WBP underscore inventory slot. Let's just open this up, pin this in this correct window, and our inventory slot, what we're gonna do is we are going to set this to desired, and notice that now the little canvas panel is that dot right there. We're gonna create our button that will be inventory slot itself. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a size box. I'm gonna drag it and actually hang on. No, first thing I'm gonna do is delete the canvas panel. And then I'm gonna put a size box in there and I'm gonna name the size box my inventory slot size box. I am going to set a width and height override and this will be the size of our button. And it's gonna be just the size of the image icon that we're going to use of 124 by 124. Within that, I am going to now have a canvas panel, which is under panel. And I'm just going to call this my inventory slot canvas. So inventory slot canvas. And we're going to have a background for this button. It's really a border. So we're gonna grab the border, drop that in there, and we'll name this border our slot background. Remember to make sure to name all these things. And we're gonna set the anchors to all four corners, so that throbbing one on the corner there. We're gonna put our right offset to zero, our bottom offset to zero, and we will just change this brush and color to a gray color. And I'm gonna use 0.047 by 0 0.047 by 0 0.047. And that will be one of the primary colors I'm gonna use over and over again. Next, I am going to grab a button and I'm gonna drop that into my slot background. And that is where we'll see the, we'll be able to click on our item to either equip it or eat it, drop it, split it, discard it, or I said drop it already, or close the menu out. So our button, let's just select this real quick, is our slot button. Under style, what we're going to do is we are going to change the normal. So the normal is what it looks like when we're not hovering, we're not pressing, we're not doing anything to it. We are going to set this to have a different tint. Our tint here, well, all we're changing is the alpha. We want it to be invisible. We don't want to see that it's a button. For our hovered, we're gonna go to an orangey yellow. And for that, what we'll do is set our values to 0 0.94, 0 0.6, 0 0.012. You can set it to whatever color you want. That's just the color I'm going to use. For our pressed, I'm gonna use a darker gray than what we currently have as our pressed option. And let's open up pressed, go to tint, and I'm gonna set it to 0.51 by 0.51 by 0.51. 
So it's actually fairly close to the background, which is, is fine. We're, we're, it's a little bit different. So it should stand out just enough to show that we've actually pressed down on it. But if you want to use a different color, again, feel free to. The color doesn't do much. Next, we're going to put an image on our button. And this will be our item image. Make sure to mark, or thank you, Epic item image. Make sure if this is not already marked as variable, it should be, but that it is marked as is variable. We're gonna set the fill to be vertically, sorry, horizontally line fill and vertically line filled. We are gonna set our visibility to hidden and everything else is the same. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna find our custom text, which we set up back at the start of this section. I'm actually a bit confused why I'm getting things that shouldn't be there. Sorry, what I meant to say is I'm a bit confused why our custom text isn't showing up here. I know it's going to be in the uncategorized for some reason. There it is, our custom text. Should honestly have shown up in our common, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. We're going to drop this on our slot. Uh, sorry, we're going to drop this on our canvas panel. And you can see we have text block showing up there. We are going to change this to our item quantity. We are going to set this just to read times 99. I'm going to use a lowercase x for times 99. Now it's really hard to see, isn't it? We can't really read it all that well. Well, what we're gonna do is, well, first we're gonna size this to content. Under our font here, we're going to give a shadow color. And all we're gonna do is up the alpha to one. And suddenly it's much more readable. We're gonna change the default font size to 16 for this. So it's this sized a bit better. And uh, we're gonna put this to align to the right hand side of our text box. Move the anchor to the bottom right corner and set our alignment to zero, zero, our size to 32 by 13 and we'll change where we place this. We'll align the uh, X by 1.1 and our Z by 1.0. And notice now we're in the proper corner of our image. We will default the visibility to hidden for now. We will update this with binding in a moment. And this is what our button is going to look like overall, where our slot is visibly going to look like. Next, I'm going to switch over to my graph. And in my graph, I am going to get rid of all of these. I am going to just very quickly put this in my usual components folder or category, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why I keep thinking of them as folders, but hey, such is life. We're going to create a custom event. And this custom event is update slot. Now, as I talked about previously, we are going to use actors to reference items and to reference the inventory instead of getting the actual inventory itself. So we're not loading things into here that we would want elsewhere. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause just for a moment. We're gonna step back. Um, we're gonna go to our survival game. We're gonna go to core. We're gonna go to interfaces and we're gonna create a new interface here. And this interface will be the interface for our inventory. So right click blueprints, blueprint interface, I inventory. Let's pop this open. And in our inventory, we're going to start with a, a function called run check if slot is free. That name should sound slightly familiar because we have a check if slot is free. This is going to be a widget related. And we'll have our old friend show back up of index ref, which is, of course, a type integer. And we'll have a return node of B slot is free. Let's just save that real quick. Let's go over to our inventory now and let's find our class settings. Let's add in our I inventory, compile this, open up the widget related interface. And all we're going to do here is find our slot is free. So plug the index in, plug the slot is free, return in, compile, save, pop back over to your inventory slot. And here what we're going to do in our inventory slot is we're going to create a 
variable called inventory actor. It will be of type actor. Look for that beige circle. We're gonna put this in the category of references. There we go. And we're going to get our inventory actor. We are going to run check if slot is free message. There we go. Plug that directly into there. Now, what is our index? Well, our index is actually gonna be stored in our button. How do we do that? Well, we'll be setting an index a little bit later on. What we're gonna do for now is just, also we're gonna expose this on spawn and make it something we can edit. What we're gonna do for now is just have a dummy variable. Because remember that inventory act is also technically right now a dummy variable. We're not filling it with anything. We're just saying, hey, expect there to be an actor in there. We haven't filled it. We're gonna create something called index ref. This is the actual index reference. It will be of type integer. It will be something we should be able to edit. And it is exposed on spawn. And this actually has to do with the placement in our inventory system, the visual part of it. So I'm just gonna call it placement as a category. Plug that into there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a branch. Now, this event is going to fire every single time we open or close the inventory or if we update our inventory per the update inventory thing we created last time. If the slot is free, then we don't want this to be active. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a bool variable called slot is active or B slot is active. Again, this is of a type Boolean. We're gonna set it here. We're gonna leave it as false. Grab your slot button. Pull from here, set is enabled. Is enabled will be set by our is active. Plug that into there. And put a reroute into here. Wow, Unreal, wow. All right, with these two, or with this reroute, pull off and do set visibility. We want it to remain hidden. And we're gonna take the set of nodes here and we are gonna collapse them down to a function. This function will be, oh, I'm gonna line those up first. This function will be our disable slot. So we disable the slot if the slot is free because we don't, which means we're disabling the button because if, if the button, or sorry, if the slot is free, we don't want to be able to open the item menu for that slot. There's nothing there to do. There's something to discard, there's something to split, there's nothing to use, what have you. Next, what we're gonna do is we are going to set our slot is active on this false here, because that means there is something in the slot. We are going to move that into a bool category. And we are going to, again, grab our slot button. We are going to do set is enabled. Again, pass that into there, this time it will be true. Plug that into there, line them up. And next, what we're gonna do is we want to do, get the item information. We wanna get the icon from our item. Well, where do we get that from? We get that from our inventory. So we're gonna pop back over to our interface and we're gonna create another new event in here, or another new um, function in here, not event. And this will be run get item info. This will go into our widget related and it will have one input of index ref. Hello, old friend, how are you doing? And then we're gonna have a return of B is empty. If you don't know why that's there, go look at the get item info. After B is empty, it is item details. That's the one we really care about. Item details, which is going to be of type F, item details. And then we want to know how many are in that slot. I did not mean to click that. So I'm gonna click the plus down here. That should be amount, and that is of type integer. Gonna compile and save, or save or compile, because it automatically saves now for compiles. Gonna compile this one out, and we have run get item info. Just gonna move that over there. And we have get item info. Plug that into there and plug in your returns. There we go. That's simple. Save that, go back to the slot here. And in our inventory slot, what we're gonna do is get our inventory actor. We are going to run get item info, plug that into there. Take your index, plug that into there. 
And from there, we're going to promote this to a variable. And this will be our item details ref, which I am just going to put in a reference folder as well, along with the actor. And then we're going to have our stack amount. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this in a folder called details. It makes more sense in details. It's a details part. And our stack amount will be called stack amount. Sorry, I was trying not to cough as I said that. I must type stack amount. Plug that into there. And what we're going to do now is take that. I hate when this happens. There we go. Take that stack amount plug that into our, or move that into our details folder. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our slot image or item image, and we are going to set visibility. We want this to be non hit testable or hit test invisible in newer versions of the engine that should be not hit testable self and children. Plug that into there and from there, we're going to pull off and we are going to do set brush from texture. And this is setting the image icon itself. We have a texture that we're going to assign to our items in our items details. We'll get our item details, break it, open that up. Item icon goes into texture, hide unconnected pins, and there we go. We're going to take the set of nodes and we are going to collapse it down to a function called set slot. We are setting the slot itself. We're making the slot something that's visible, usable, enabled, has an icon, all that fun stuff. All right. Now, while we're going to have other things on this graph at some point, we're going to have what happens when we press the button, when we hover over the button to check if we should be able to hover over the button and get what happens when we unhover. We're gonna take care of that down the road. We have other things we need to do to be able to do all of those things. So instead, what we are going to do is we are going to worry about the stack size text and its visibility. So go to the designer real quick. In the designer, select your item quantity or the stack size and up here we have our text. Let's set that binding real quick. And this will be, yeah, stack size text. Yes, I know my convention is to use set, but you know what? I shouldn't indoctr indoctrinate you into my bad habits. So this one's really, really simple. We're going to move this here and we're going to do format text. And this is good for localization, this node. What we're going to do is put in a X, then a curly bracket, the word amount, and then another curly bracket. That was not a, a closing curly bracket. Notice that now amount shows up here. Anything that shows up in a curly bracket, and you could have more than one set of curly brackets, will be something we can plug in. And we're going to take our stack amount and plug that into there. So what will show up is X and whatever numbers in there. But we don't want it to show up if there's only just one item. So if it's a non-stacked item, actually, sorry, we don't want to show up if it's a non-stackable item, not if it's a just one in the stack. I mean, you could if you wanted. Scroll down on the graph with the but with the text selected to this visibility, and we're going to create a new binding. And this binding will be our set stack text visibility. So set stack text visibility without the backspace there. All right. This is, we're going to do a, a branch at the start because we only want to run this event if the slot is active. So put a branch in. All right, move that just a little bit that way. And I'm going to duplicate the return node. If the branch is not active, we are definitely hidden. Hidden. All right. Sorry, I was confirming hidden because what happened, I can't remember how many videos back or uh, the heel video, the UMG. If it is active, what we're going to do is plug back into the tree. We are going to make a choice here. So we're going to have a select node. And what we're going to base this on is if this is a stackable item or not. So I'm going to get my item details. I'm going to break the results here. I'm going to open that up for a moment. Is stackable. Plug into my index value there. Hide unconnected pins. 
and I'm gonna make this choice on what to do if it's stackable. If it is stackable, so this bottom true pin, it is gonna be hit test invisible, or again, for newer engines, not hit testable, self and all children. And if it is false, it will be hidden. All right, what's gonna happen is it will uh, run every time we open or close our inventory window or update our inventory window. Actually, eh, well, we'll talk about that down the road in terms of some potential uh, things to be aware of because our, our equipment system was gonna use a similar slot, but it's gonna run differently. If there's nothing in here, this will hide out the image. It'll be completely blinked out. If there is something in here, this button will become active. The image will then become active. It will check. Is there something in, is it a stackable item? If so, display the text of how many we have in that stack. All right, that said, we finished out setting up our slot for our video or for our uh, inventory widget. We have started to set communications between our widget and our, yeah, I'm not making the joke, and our, um, between our widget and our inventory. We've done so without making a hard copy of our inventory in the widget. Calling actor, because the inventory is a actor type, the child of actor, allows us to use inheritance to our advantage. If you've enjoyed setting up your inventory slot button and are looking forward to having a working inventory, make sure to hit that like button down below. It lets me know that I'm bringing you content that you appreciate and enjoy. It also helps get this channel out to people who might not know it exists because the YouTube algorithm runs on likes, also on comments. That said, if you wanna make sure you're here when we continue working on our inventory system and we finish setting up parts of our UI for inventory, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon. In addition, if you want a copy of this project, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Patreon supporters get access to, at upper tiers, get instant access to the project and all ongoing YouTube projects. At other tiers, Patreon supporters will get access once the project is completed on YouTube. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Quadmenson, Haynes, and Rian. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.